Over $125 billion sit in DeFi protocols today. A lot of dough. A lot of dough. Yet, they're scattered across chains that don't speak the same language, forcing users to navigate complexity, pay for fragmentation, and for many, lose everything. A simple transfer from Ethereum to Solana becomes a multi-step puzzle. Wrap, lock, bridge, and wait. It's like using five different banks in five different countries, all without customer support. And when it breaks, it breaks hard. Sure does. In the first half of 2025 alone, over $2.8 billion vanished in bridge hacks. The most recent high-profile victim, Forced Bridge on Nervos drained of nearly $3.9 million in ETH, stablecoins, and wrapped BTC. Now, that exploit, triggered by a misconfigured admin key, followed the announcement that the protocol was sunsetting, giving attackers the perfect window to strike. This wasn't an isolated incident, it was the latest entry in a string of high-stakes failures that continued to shake trust in the infrastructure we rely on to move assets across chains. So the question is, are bridges, hubs, or aggregators actually solving DeFi's liquidity problems or just making it worse in new ways? Let's figure this out. Every layer one and layer two chain Ethereum, Solana, Avalanche, Base, Arbitrum, they live in their own walled garden. And despite all the talk about interoperability, the reality on the ground is clunky and brittle. Users still have to wrap tokens, lock them up, and wait for confirmations, and hope the bridge works on the other side. Better start praying if it don't. And if the timing's off and liquidity isn't deep, or gas fees spike, you're stuck. And when something goes wrong, it usually goes very wrong. They're quantum locked. In March 2022, Axie Infinity's Ronin bridge was hit for over $600 million, the result of just five compromised private keys. Months earlier, Wormhole lost $320 million after a hacker found a simple missing signature check. Nomad's $200 million exploit? That one was worse. A copy-paste vulnerability so easy to trigger, people started joining in like it was a public ADM. And now, Force Bridge. $3.76 million gone, drained days after its sunset was announced. A Chainlink-backed study confirmed the pattern. Nearly 40% of all crypto hacks in Web3 come from bridges. Not DEXs, not wallets, bridges, or aggregators. Whoa, the broken bridge! The supposed highways between ecosystems are the most fragile part of the entire DeFi stack, and the most profitable for attackers. The bridge crew are under constant attack. Now, bridges are supposed to fix this. They're meant to connect blockchains to let assets move freely between networks like highways between cities. But too often, they don't build trust, they break it. Here's how they work in theory. You lock a token on chain, and a new version of that token appears on chain B. When you're done, you reverse it, and that's the promise. But the reality depends entirely on who's running the bridge and how it's built. But who's behind it? Who? Centralized bridges are fast and easy to use, but you're just handing the keys to a single operator. What if they hack the server? And if they get hacked, if they vanish, or if they just make a mistake, your funds are gone. On the other hand, decentralized bridges spread the trust across multi-sigs, validator sets, or even oracles. On paper, that should be safer. In practice, it means more moving parts, more smart contracts, more assumptions, and more places for things to go wrong. Well then, I chose... Take Force Bridge. The attackers didn't find some obscure vulnerability in the code. They got access to a privileged admin key. Quietly, no alarms, no governance. They tested it for hours by submitting dry run withdrawals. Then, when they knew no one was watching, they emptied the bridge across Ethereum and BSC. Smooth. The total haul? 539 ETH, 898,000 USDC, 250,000 USDT and 60,000 DAI and nearly a full Bitcoin in wrapped form. Laundered through Tornado Cash. We've laundered enough. Split across addresses using fixed float. And by the time anyone noticed, the money was gone. Oh, this is this only a dollar left. This wasn't a flaw in the blockchain. It was a flaw in the assumptions. 
the very human idea that someone somewhere was paying attention. Pay attention. Next, we have liquidity hubs. These platforms promise to simplify the chaos. Instead of bridging every time, you deposit your assets once and let the hub handle the rest. Pontoon Finance was one of the first to try. The idea was elegant. Pool liquidity from multiple blockchains into a single vault, and you, as a user, don't need to bridge. You don't need to wrap. You just deposit once and you are free to trade across chains. In return, you earn Toon tokens, its native incentive. The flow was clean. The interface was smooth. And for a moment, it looked like this could actually be a model to watch. This I like. But centralization always comes at a price. These hubs act like cross-chain banks. They hold your funds, match your trades, and process withdrawals, which means they become a single point of failure. If the vault gets drained, the system goes down with it. And if the team gets compromised or the regulator comes knocking, users are stuck. Everything depends on it. Pontoon launched back in 2021, riding the first wave of multi-chain hype. But fast forward to today, and it's mostly faded into the background. Updates are sporadic, on-chain activity is thin, and TVL remains low. They deserve it. They deserve it. It's not that the idea was wrong, it's the execution. Centralized custody in a decentralized world never quite earned the trust it needed. And in DeFi, trust is everything. Then come aggregators, the intelligent layer that sits on top of the chaos. Instead of locking your funds or rerouting them through a single vault, aggregators scan the entire multi-chain landscape in real time. They don't look at bridges, pubs, dexes, pools, or fee structures and slippage, and they choose the best path for your trade. They don't hold your tokens, they don't take custody, they just route your transaction through the least painful way possible. That's how it's done. Now, Swapspace is one of the major players today, connecting dozens of providers and constantly optimizing across chains. And that's the promise aggregators as the routing brains of DeFi. Wait, is that us? Now, let's dig deeper into the Forcebridge saga, because this wasn't just another exploit. Fire another round of warning shots. It was a warning shot, and like most warning shots in crypto, it was ignored until it was too late. On May 31st, Magic Base quietly announced that Forcebridge would be sunset. A routine closure, nothing dramatic, but to the right attacker, it signaled opportunity. The bridge was winding down. Fewer eyes were watching and withdrawals were active. And controls, if they ever existed, were likely soft. A day later, it happened. The attackers spent six hours running dry run transactions, methodical, patient, and precise. No rush, no panic, just testing. Then, once the window was clear, they pulled the trigger and a full drain across Ethereum and BSC occurred. Roughly 3.67 million stolen in minutes. By the time anyone noticed, the trail had gone cold. But the most disturbing part wasn't the laundering, it was the access. According to cybersecurity firm Halborn, the attacker used a privileged account, one with off-chain key permissions that allowed them to bypass normal controls. No governance votes, no multi-sig, no alerts. A tracked wallet had funded itself the day before, gone silent, and then came back online to execute. There is no circuit breaker, no pause function, no monitoring dashboards pinging a red flag. It is truly the silent killer. And by the time Magic Base responded, the protocol wasn't just compromised, it was empty. He goes home, there's nothing left? Nothing left! <laughs> and Force Bridge wasn't alone. The same script had played out again and again. Ronan's $600 million loss started with just five validator keys. Wormhole's $320 million came from a missing signature check. Nomad's $200 million loss was so trivial to replicate that dozens of unrelated users joined the heist just to see if they could because I wanted to see if I could. Each time postmortems are written, audit reports are published and remediation plans are drawn up, and each time someone else fails in the same exact way. <laughs> I can't believe you fell for it again. Force Bridge didn't fall to a complex exploit. 
It fell because no one removed privileged access. An inside job. Impossible. No one locked it down. No one thought an old admin key still sitting on the system would be the kill switch. Not a coding issue, not a zero day, just bad operational hygiene. Simple and catastrophic. Now let's talk about innovation. The article we wrote points to a shift that is already underway. Emerging cross-chain liquidity models claiming 18% faster execution, 50% greater robustness, and 25% tighter convergence between chains. And these aren't just marketing stats, we're seeing the architecture change in real time. Protocols like Layer Zero are rolling out omni-chain messaging systems that don't rely on wrapped assets or third-party custody. Instead of locking tokens on one chain and minting synthetic versions on another, they're enabling a burn and mint model that treats movement between chains as a native operation, not a workaround. Do you understand any of that? And again, it's not just theory. Some protocols are experimenting with omni-chain standards that allow native asset transfers across chains, avoiding wrapped tokens or third-party custody. These efforts aim to eliminate gas mismatches, reduce slippage, and simplify cross-chain user flows. And new omni-chain token deployments continue to roll out across major ecosystems, bringing with them low slippage transfer options and broader virtual machine compatibility. These aren't theoretical, they're already being used in production, and the rest of the industry is moving too. In August 2024, BNB Chain partnered with Seller, TheBridge, and Stargate to build a multi-bridge interface, a sign that even giants are admitting one bridge isn't enough. MetaMask snaps are becoming another layer of user protection. Mini apps that run inside your wallet, forecasting slippage or warning you about unstable bridges before you click confirm. And behind the scenes, AI-powered routing and zero-knowledge proofs are being built to optimize these transfers in real time, scanning routes, stress testing testing contexts, and flagging anomalies without exposing user data. These tools aren't just safer, they're smarter, and the coordination is scaling. And major players in this space, the ENSO Stargate Layer Zero Coalition, recently coordinated multi-billion dollar liquidity migrations across chains, demonstrating that cross-chain interoperability at scale is becoming viable. Even BNB Chain's Superstacks program is now experimenting with modular DeFi pools that adapt to user activity, deepen liquidity on demand, and reduce fragmentation before it even starts. So where do we arrive? Bridges give us access but they come with fragility. Operational shortcuts, admin keys, tax services, hubs improve flow, but they centralize risk and introduce regulatory exposure. Aggregators offer optimized routing, but they can't fix the broken infrastructure that they still rely on. The next wave looks different. Modular, composable frameworks that blend trust-minimized design, real-time monitoring, wallet-level execution, and autonomous routing could finally deliver what we've been promised since the start. True cross-chain interoperability, secure, fluid, and invisible to the user. Imagine sending assets between Solana and Arbitrum like sending a text message. No approval chains, no wrapping, no guessing on gas, no 20 minute wait time to find out if your transaction failed, and that would be the end game. But we won't get there by chance, we'll get there by design. That means protocols need to cooperate, standards need to converge, monitoring needs to be public, and security needs to be embedded, not patched after the launch. And users, us, we need to get smarter too, because this is only the beginning. The more automated DeFi becomes, the more important it is to know what's happening under the hood. The good news, we're not alone. AI, ZK tech, omni-chain protocols, smarter wallets, they're not just tools, they're allies. And if we use them well, we can build a DeFi ecosystem that is not just interoperable, but indestructible. So if you've been hit by a bridge hack, or if you've found a tool, a token, or a protocol that works, drop it in the comments. Someone else might need it. We're building a community here. One that doesn't just chase trends, but learns from them. One that doesn't just ask what's next, but decides it. Thank you for watching. Like the video, subscribe, and hit that bell notification and stay tuned for more deep dives like this.